In today's tutorial, you're going to learn how to create a custom railing style in Visual Arc from scratch using Grasshopper. We will learn how to integrate Grasshopper definitions with Visual Arc plugin. And lastly, you can use this process to create any important parameters for your custom styles and change them parametrically. Let's see this in action. Hey guys, Dushan here. Before we start, if this is your first time here, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to our channel as we upload new tutorials each week on Rhino and Grasshopper and how to use these tools specifically for architecture. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to create uh, our sketch so that we have an idea of how this would look like. So let's start from the zero. Let's go from zero, zero, zero. And let's create, let's say here, five centimeters. And this is going to be uh, the center of our a railing and then let's create the top so it's going to be 110 and i'm also going to copy this guy and copy this one and join it and uh, now i'm going to create one more line here that's going to have 100 and here it's going to have 15 centimeters that's going to be the location of our uh, railing so i'm going to create a small circle here and this circle is going to be let's say let's say something like this so i'm just trying to see what would all work a good here so i'm going to create one rectangle here let's keep it five by five and let's put it here also in the position and lastly we're going to use this guy we can copy it over and let's put this to be something like let's say one okay so something like this so we have an idea of how this would look like from the from the side view so let me just see if this is yeah this is five five and this guy is two centimeters that's that's perfectly fine so this is how our hand railing is going to look like so so these shapes are going to represent one element so i'm going to use curve boolean and i'm going to take them have one big pole line i'm going to delete this and now i'm gonna go to my perspective view and let's flip this over and let's go rotate 3d like so and we can have this uh as our shape so now i'm simply going to create planar surface here and that's all we're gonna need from Rhino. Uh, so now I'm gonna go to Grasshopper and let's start. So first we're gonna need some uh, some curves. So I'm gonna say curve and we can also name it. Let's uh, call it let's call it path curve. That's the one that we're gonna be using and uh, we also need a balancer. So let's create one B-Rep. That's, that's gonna be our balancer like so and we can call this path curve. Okay. So have these two inputs and let me just copy this and let's also create here baluster. Okay, so we can take this guy. This is going to be our uh, B-Rep, the first one. And now the first thing that we may want to control is the thickness of this of this baluster. So I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, to find the area here uh, to find the middle and I'm going to use evaluate surface so that we can uh, get this uh, the, get the normal of the surface and I'm going to use extrude and I'm going to use here the amplitude so that uh, I can give it the vector and I can give it the amount so in this case let's uh, let's put something like five centimeters I think that's gonna be fine that's gonna be the thickness so let's call it baluster thickness Okay, and I'm going to take the normal here, put it in the vector, put the vector in the direction and also the base should be actually this, this surface here. So now you can see what we got. So we got, uh, we got the, the extrusion, however, we want this to go uh, in, the, in the opposite direction. So all we need to do here is to put one a negative and that would solve it. So let's just put this slider here so that this goes inside. Okay, so once that is done, we have the first, so to say, control. Point. The, this is the parameter that you'll be able to control later on in our visual arc style. So now let's move on. Let's see what else we can do. All right, so we have this one element. Now let's see what uh, we're gonna do with this curve. So I'm going to simply create one curve and we're gonna be using this as this path curve. So uh, let's simply click here, set one curve. And now I'm going to use uh, the move command to actually create this railing here. So the way that this works, we're simply going to use the move command and I'm going to uh, bring this up. So let's use here the Z vector and let's use the panel and let's put here 100. That's the, the, the amount that, that we have. And let's place it here. Uh, and you will see that this will bring, this will bring our curve up. 
Okay, and here uh, we can use offset curve and that would give us the offset on the inside. And let's simply put here number 15. That's how much we had. So once you put that, you can see that this curve is gonna be exactly on that, on that position. That's exactly what we need. And uh, now here we can use a simple pipe component, which will allow us to create um, the radius. So here is the small radius and I'm going to test, I'm going to see what would work. So for example, you can see this is number four, number five, six, seven. So I would say that from seven to let's say four would be fine. So I'm gonna go here to the edit and I'm gonna say the minimum is four and the maximum is seven. And that's gonna be fine. And uh, you will see that we can change this later on in visual arc. That's what we can rename here. So we can say handrail thickness. Okay, and this is one more parameter that we can change. So we're gonna put it here at the beginning. Okay, that's that's all good. And now from that point, we need to use the cap holes option. I'm gonna place it here. And uh, lastly, we're going to, to use one last brep component. So visual arc works so that it recognizes the brep or geometry components that don't have the ending, if, if it's the last component. So you need to create a brep at the end so that the grasshopper knows to recognize this uh, as an object in Visual Arc. Okay, so once once we're done with that, then now we can move on. Okay, so the next thing is to create, uh, to actually distribute this guy along this line. So the way to do this, uh, we're going to be using divide curve option, and we're going to use the initial curve here, the path curve, and uh, we're going to divide it and the amount of divisions here are actually going to represent the amount of, uh, of balusters. So we can call it baluster density. Okay. And that's one more option that we can change. And let's put it there in the count. So you can see that these points are actually going to represent uh, the positions of this element. So the way that this works, we need to use orient component. And we need to say, okay, I want this guy. This is my geometry and I want its location to be, uh, this is the source, so this is the location of my object, and I have a target object, so the target would be these parameters here. So the way that this works, we need to use an option called horizontal frame. That option will give us those parameters. So I will take this curve, I'll take my curve, and I want to use it with these parameters. So, so these are the parameters of the curve, and I'm gonna have these frames here. And these frames are going to be the final positions of my target, so that's gonna be here. And I simply need now to use the source because uh, as you can see here now, we have some, some kind of weird result and that's because the planes are not uh, correct. So the way that this works, we need to create a correct plane for this initial one, this, this initial object. So, so right now, uh, you can see that this plane is located here and we actually need to put it on the exact center. We need to put it on the exact center of this place here so that everything is going accordingly and in order. So first we need to use that. We need to use this extrusion. We need to find that that single panel. So let's go to deconstruct uh, brep and let's take let's take that face. So let's go with list item and let's see if we can find it to see which one it is. So let's go to face, a list, and I'm gonna simply make a slider to see which index it is. So let me just go through it. Okay, so it's number four here, you can see. It's number four. And I don't want to use sliders because the sliders will be recognized in Visual Arc. I'm gonna simply use number four here. That's why we're using numbers instead of sliders if we know the one that we're gonna be using. So we have this guy, and now I simply need to find at the middle. I need to find uh, the center area of it and then I need to create a plane. So I'm gonna go construct plane. That's gonna be the origin. And now I can use, oops, sorry, this one. And now I can use uh, this plane, as you can see, as my, uh, as my source. So this is going to be my source. And now you can see uh, the preview. So you can see how they're positioned exactly in that uh, in that in that manner. However, 
they're uh, rotated in the right direction. So we also need to correct that. So all we need to do is these frames, these horizontal frames, we need to actually rotate them. So all we need to do is simply use the component rotate plane. And I'm going to use at the angle, let me see, I think it's, uh, I think it's minus 90. So I'm going to use radiance here, angle, and let's, let's use minus 90. Let's use it here. And let's see uh, what this result will be. So this is going to be the plane and this is going to go here. Okay. And now if we go up, you can see how they're, they're rotated. So let's, let's jump back and let's maybe, uh, maybe you want me to zoom in. I can zoom in so you can uh, see what, what happened. So if it was like this, you can see how they were rotated. So we, all we did, we rotated these planes initially. So you can see how these planes here, let me just hide this one. So you can see how uh, on this plane, uh, this is the green one and this is the red one, the red axis. And all we needed to do is actually rotate these guys around Z axis. So we just rotated it minus 90 so that the new, uh, the new plane is the green one is here and the red one is here. So if we take a look at the new one, you can see the difference. So you can see in the new one that the, the green one is here and the red one is here. And that's why that's how the rotation would work. So once we have that, uh, we're pretty much ready. And let's see, let's see what we can do next. Okay, now I can see that I don't need this guy anymore. I don't want to see this one as the input. Uh, and also don't want to see this one as the input here. Okay, so one thing that I noticed here, you can see how this railing is not going all the way until the end. That's because this is the end of the line. So it goes all the way until the end of the line, but this last element actually you know it has the thickness and because of that it doesn't go inside there's a cool way that we can fix this we can use an option called extend curve we can actually just extend this curve and use it to replace the curve on the top here let's simply use extend as extend curve and let's connect our main path curve here and all we need to do here is now give it the amount because if you remember uh, at the beginning we actually created a thickness this is going to be half the thickness so all we need to do is divide that thickness in half and then we're going to have the exact amount until the end here uh, the way that this works all we need to do is use the division so i'm going to use the division here and i'm going to put this i'm going to put a new panel that will say divide this in two so on the thickness of the baluster here to be, to be divided by two and that's the actual amount of extension that I need. So if I put this in the start and in the end, you can see how uh, this curve is going to be extended. However, this is not visible yet, so it's visible in the bottom. So we need to just replace this curve with the curve that we used for piping. So instead, the move here, this is the one that needs to be replaced. So I'm going to disconnect it and I'm going to put this one instead of here. Now you can see how this curve works perfectly with our baluster and it's all matching perfectly okay everything is ready so we have our b rep which is going to be our handrail that's it and we have our balusters we also need to create a b rep and let's call it balusters like so and now we're ready we have b reps at the end and we have b reps uh we have one b-rep here we have one input component only from from rhino and we have these options that we can change so we can change uh, the handrail thickness so for example if i change the thickness here you can see how the handrail will react if i change the baluster density you will see how the density will change and lastly i can change the baluster thickness here and if i change it you can see how everything will you know shrink accordingly and work uh, together so that's the cool thing about this definition that you can change pretty much all the elements. And now let's uh, let's see how we can export this as a single style in Visual Arc. All we need to do is to make sure that we have the B-reps at the end and we have the input of the path curve and the baluster. So we can also use inter internalized data option because it will help us uh, so that this definition is completely independent from our Rhino file. So once I'm done, I'm going to save this definition. And now I'm going to go to Rhino and I'm going to come here to the railing options and I'm going to right click railing styles. This will open up a new window and all I need to do is actually click here, grasshopper style, and now I'm going to simply click on the browse and choose my definition. Once I've chosen it, 
I click next and here I'm going to get a preview of what is that definition going to look like. So here I'm going to call it, let's say railing one, very creative, I know always. And here is the geometry that's going to be imported, handrail and buzzers. I click next and here are uh, the options that I'm going to be able to change. So I can change the density, the thickness and the handrail thickness. And this is the B-Wrap that I'm going to get. When I click on finish, I will create a new style. Now railing is done. We have the handrail, we have the balusters, and we also have the option to change the parameters here. When I click OK, now I will be able to create, let's say I'm going to create a new line here and I want to use this line as my handrail. I'm simply going to, to, to come here uh, from curves. I'm going to click my curve and I'm going to click uh, enter. And this is going to give me the default style. So I can change it here. I can come to railing and I can simply choose here the style railing one. That's the one we did. And now you can see the result. You can see our uh, our new style that we just created and how you can use it. So for example, this does need to be only this line. It can be any kind of line. So it can be a straight line. It can be a rectangular line, whatever you like. So for example, uh, let's create it one more time. I'm going to click here from curves. And now here I can choose the style. I click railing and now I can select the curve right away click enter and that's it and now uh, if you're wondering okay but what if I want to change this so you can also change uh, when you move it you can also change the position so you have the option to change this initial uh, initial curve and initial points and that will also change the the position of, of this handrail which is pretty cool but one last thing that I wanted to show you here also is uh, the ability to change the parameters that we we set it so for example if you want to change the parameters so for example what if you want to have uh, one that doesn't have that many balusters and you want one that is very dense you can you can do that by going to the styles here and you can simply duplicate this one style once you duplicate that one the second one you can change for example its density and i'm going to change the density here from let's say uh, 20 to let's say 30 for example i'm going to click ok and now I'm going to go to this guy and I'm going to change that style to this newly created style. And you will see how the density will update automatically. And also, if I want to play around with other elements, I can I can do so as well. I can simply come here and I can change these parameters. For example, I can change uh, the bezel thickness. Let's bring it back to five and let's bring the thickness to, let's say, six. When I click OK, you will see how it will automatically update here. And that's the process that you would use to create your custom railing stars in visual art with grasshopper this is going to be a long one in this extended version of this tutorial which is available only on our patreon page we will create this classical railing from scratch it has all three elements included like balusters posts and hand railings we will go through the whole algorithm and explain it in detail so you can be completely comfortable in creating your own custom visual art styles the link to the extended tutorial in our patreon page is in the description below with that you will also get access to all of our extended tutorials and project files i'd like to thank all of our patreons thank you guys for the support if you like what we do please consider becoming patreon yourself and if you like a structured approach to learning right now grasshopper architecture presentation and rendering, you can apply for our Rhino for Architects 2.0 course, first link in the description. See you soon!